As the Champions League is coming to a close, I wanted to give my input who I think is going to reach the final of this season. And I don't think a lot of people would have predicted these outcomes that we are seeing right now. Obviously, we've had some amazing games, some amazing losses for huge big teams. And I think for the first time in a few years, we're going to see a finalist that might be an underdog. And I think that's just pretty amazing from the footballing side that we're going to be able to see a new team in the final, you know, rather than just like Real Madrid, Liverpool, Bayern Munich all those bigger teams but today I'm gonna be talking about who I think is gonna go through in and what my kind of thoughts about this whole thing so before we go into it I wanted to clarify that the way I'm going to be evaluating these brackets or these final outcomes I will be regarding mostly teams the team's last 10 games because I think as a supporter of the team that you you know you're supporting I think you might have a bias of the whole overall season that's what, what I'm gonna be basing my answers off of kind of like the most recent games that teams have played for and and yeah, essentially that's going to be it. So for the first team, um, we're going to be looking at from the left side of the bracket. I think I mean, there's going to be a picture up here. But the first team that I'm going to I'm going to want to kind of go over is obviously the mighty Real Madrid. And as we can kind of see here in the last 10 games, obviously it hasn't been really that good. I mean, you know, Barcelona beat them two to one, which is obviously not good but you know barcelona i feel like is always a team that beats real madrid but liverpool liverpool hasn't been in a good form i think they beat espanol they've kind of drew against real betis i don't know how well they're doing but still a draw against uh you know mid caliber team is in that wall of a result uh they lost again in barcelona they obviously won against liverpool atletico madrid they won Nasasuna, elche and then after that, it's been kind of iffy because just because it's been the club, club World Cup final, which uh, there isn't really that much competition. So I'd say in my regard that Real Madrid has had some obviously amazing moments, but just I think if you go more recently, they've kind of had some iffy results against Barcelona, Real Betis, and Real Madrid and Barcelona. So I don't know. I, I think if I were to give a rating on, on this team based on performances, I think I'd have to give at least maybe a 7 out of 10, maybe out of the last 10 games. So the next team that i'm going to be going over is going to be chelsea and i wanted to go over their you know their last 10 games as well and essentially kind of seeing you know we, we we know that chelsea spent like the most amount of money this transfer window because uh you know the new owner they bought the likes of Mikhailo mudrid enzo perez joao felix at an alone spell and obviously there's going to be new people coming in the summer so it, as we look here in the last 10 games they've drew against everton they won against Leicester city won against Dortmund, which is obviously that's why they're in the champions league they won against leeds united they lost against tottenham which is always a really weird clash i'd say lost against south Hampton. But I think I'd say they have a better team than Real Madrid in paper. They aren't getting the results they have wanted to get. And I think it's just over because of the time. So many new players coming in the squad and it's just going to be hard to adjust into the Premier League, I think, for many of those players. So in that regard, I think my rating at that team, I mean, behaving on the last 10 performances, I definitely gave them like a 5 out of 10. And I'm sorry, Chelsea fans, whoever is watching that is a Chelsea fan. But like regarding those 10 games, it's just going to be really hard for me to rate them that high. So obviously, if, you know, if Real Madrid is a 7 out of 10 and Chelsea, in my opinion, is a 5 out of 10 out of the last 10 games, there's no way I think Chelsea will beat Real Madrid. In that regard, I'd say Real Madrid is going to go through it. If you, if you see my screen, hopefully you're able to kind of zoom in. Now, the next two teams that I'm going to be talking about, hopefully I'm going to be, you know, talking faster than what i am right now but it'll be manchester city and we all know that man city has had a great season but when looking in their last 10 games and i'm i think i'm just gonna be basing my answers off of that to be less biased i'd say because i'm not definitely not gonna say who i support but to be less biased we have to look at their last few games and wow 6-0 against burnley 7-0 against against rb leipzig 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 4-1, 1-1, one, one, obviously that weird draw against Leipzig in the first leg of the round of 16. High against Man City, Man City against Nottingham Forest, win against Arsenal, win against Aston Villa. I'd say if you really consider the last maybe six games, they're definitely like the one of the most scariest teams in Europe. 
So like if I were to rate them out of one to ten, one out of ten, like I've said before, I definitely I mean they're not perfect, obviously, just because they've gotten those two draws, as you see up there. If I were to rate them, I'd, I'd say it's a nine out of ten, to be honest. Um, a nine out of ten, which is crazy to say. The last four years, they've been dominating the league and the champions league. Not dominating the last champions league, but they've they reached a little bit further into the composition than what people expected. So nine out of the ten in Manchester City. But then if we were to look at Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich's last few games, we can definitely see that they've been kind of struggling. We can see in their standings that they're off by one point against Dortmund, which is, you know, I'm still kind of not going to base my answer off of, you know, the season as a whole, but the last 10 games, we can see that Bayern, they lose against Bayern Leverkusen last week or a few days ago. Wow, that's crazy. A few days ago, they lost 2 1. I didn't know that. One against PSG, Stuttgart, Union Berlin. They lost against Monchers Gladbach. They've been kind of dominated, uh, like dominant in some matches, but they've been kind of underperforming. You can see here, this 1-1 one, one against RB Leipzig, this 1-1 one, one against Frankfurt and Köln, and this other one from RB South, which isn't even like RB Leipzig. So like, obviously, I think in my opinion, they are the team to beat Bayern always every year. They have a squad, they have the, the abilities, they have the players. Um, but I think just this season and in the last few games, I'd rate them maybe like a 7 out of 10 or maybe an 8 out of 10 just because of the results. They haven't been as convincing as what Man City has done. And I know people could say that the league in the Premier League is harder than the Bundesliga, but I think that kind of has some truth to it just because it has a better competition. And based off of that, I'm just going to assume that Man City has a better probability. So in that regard, in my bracket up here, I'm going to choose Man City just because they've been, you know, overperforming. Obviously, they've been overperforming. And I know people are going to say that Man City isn't in first place in the Premier League, but I think the way they've been winning games, the dominance in games they've been winning, it's just been crazy to watch. As a football fan so that's one of my semi-final two teams or whatever that is and then the other side which is the craziest side i think this is we're gonna at least get one good team in this final uh one underdog team in this final and the first of all we're gonna be looking at ac milan and napoli so if you go to ac milan um in their last few games so we can see in their standings they're in fourth place and with 48 points and we see napoli i mean the team they're going to be playing against they're definitely in first place and I, I think they might just win the league to be honest but when looking at their last few games and they still oh my god they're playing napoli again so i think this match will really matter for both teams just to get a better sense of themselves and seeing how to like play against each other i think that's gonna be a really interesting game which is i mean this video is definitely recorded before that game so we see here they lost against udinense they tied against salte sal saler tirana saler tinana that's a really weird name obviously they drew against tottenham lost against fiorentina one against Atlanta, one one zero against Monza. Uh, they've had some really weird losses, some really embarrassing losses, like this one with Lazio and Sassuolo. So I mean, based off of that, thinking at the top of my head, the, the, the players that they've had are really aging. They have the likes of Giroud, Slatan. The only like really good player that I can think of on their team would might be like Rafael Leao and Tonali. And this is just not based off of stats, it's just like me visually. Hopefully, I don't have to put that much work in. But if I were to rate them out of one out of ten i'd definitely give them like a five they're not doing that well i think um so yeah the next team obviously and i'm gonna be looking at is napoli and when looking at their last few games i feel like they've been dominating yeah they've been definitely dominating four zero two zero one zero okay well they lost against lazio they won Two zero goes in poly. Two zero, two zero, three zero, three zero. Damn, they've been definitely dominating the Italian league, which definitely makes sense. In th they're in first place at the moment, and just based off of that, based off of the players that they have in their squad, well, Seaman is de definitely getting back in form just now. The amount of goals he's been scoring has been amazing. Karaskelia, I think that's what his name is. He's been tearing it up the last few games, I think. Oh, I believe that he is. So based off of that, I'd give him, I'd say that I'd give him like an 8 out of 10. Based off of those ratings, I think the most probable player or the most probable team that is going to win is Napoli. So in my bracket, I have them winning this game. And for these two, Benfica and Inter, this is going to be a really interesting match just because Benfica has been definitely tearing it up in the Champions League. But I'm also sure in their league, how much, how well they're doing. Um, okay, wow, they've been definitely they've been doing really good. 5 1, 3-0, 5-1, 2-0, 2-0, 3-1, 2-0. I mean, this really doesn't count. It's just like a whatever league in Portugal. This league is cup thing. 3-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2
3-0. So based off of that, and then I'm going to be kind of looking at uh, their players. So we all know that, yeah, they have really good players. Even though they lost Darwin Nunez and so many other players, they lost Enzo Perez just this January window. But they have some pretty good backups. Like I heard Gonzalo Ramos, Davi Neres, you know, some really good backup pieces like Rafa Silva. I didn't know Julian Draxler was there, but that's a good, like, I'm pretty sure he's not starting. So based off of that, I, I'd give him an 8 out of 10 in rating just because of the performances. I know it's not the same as playing against Inter, but we're going to have to see how Inter are doing in their league and see if that kind of compares with the, uh, you know, with intensity of that league. And we, we can see here, they lost against Juventus, they tied against Porto, which isn't that great. They lost against Spezia, won against Lise, lost, another win, another win, another tie, another win. So they haven't been doing that well, but they also haven't been doing that bad. So it's kind of like an average. And if I were to give a rating, I'd say I'd give them a six. So based off of that assumption, Benfica having an eight rating and Inter having a six, then by, by that definition, I say Benfica is going to win this one. So now that we've seen the matches and you know given my opinions on them so if i rate man city here as a nine and real madrid as an eight or even a seven i forgot what i rated real madrid but i think history has a lot to do with this competition and we've seen real madrid come from from behind so many times especially last season where they were behind i think in three of the three of the matches that they were playing and they all but man city has holland in as a striker and this year is different. So, I mean, by that assumption, I don't really know who to pick. I mean, by rating, I'd say Man City. But I'd, in my heart, maybe Real Madrid just because of their history. And I know what they can do on this Champions League. And I know what they've done over the years. But I think my gut tells me to pick Man City just because of Holland. I think I think this year will be different. So, I, I'm i sorry, a lot of Real Madrid fans. But I think Man City, there's no way beating this Man City side. Especially with Holland as their new striker. So I think I have Man City in the final. And in this other side, I have Napoli and Benfica, which is going to be crazy. I don't really know who to pick just because they've been having good campaigns. And I'm pretty sure if you, if I were to go to Benfica, they're in first place by 10 points. And I know it's like Liga Nos, meaning Liga de Liga, the Portuguese league. Based off that assumption, Benfica and Napoli, I just say, I think, I think in my opinion, in my heart, because of the, the players that they have this season, Napoli is going to win it. Win this match, not the whole thing, but win this match. So this is what I'm gonna be putting as my bracket. So Man City and Napoli, and what I have as my verdict might be. I mean, there's it makes kind of it makes sense who I might go for, and I think this year might be the year Man City wins the whole thing just because of Holland and the amount of consistency they've had over the seat over the years, and, and especially this season, especially the last ten games. So I think I had my winner to be Man City. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. I don't want to be wrong, and I don't want to get a lot of hate. So that's my assumption. That's who I think is going to win it. Leave your comments down below who you think is going to win it. Hopefully you guys have a better assumption on who's going to win it better than me. Hopefully, I, hopefully you guys are way smarter than me, but you guys don't. Yeah, this is my assumption. If you guys like the video in this type of format, please leave a like, subscribe and tell me uh, how well I did. And then I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.